Hi, my name's Ian from Las Vegas Scooters and Lifts. Today behind the camera is Jenny. Say hi, Jenny. Hello. She's going to be uh, holding the camera for me while I review our number four scooter. It's going to be the Smart Scoot. This is actually a customer scooter that's come in and uh, coming for a service so I'm going to do a review on it now and show you the differences between the smart scoot and the new handy scoot that we can get both of them. I think they'll probably phase out the handy scoot, uh, the smart scoot sorry and go with the handy scoot. They're very similar if not identical just a few of the little touches between the two scooters but I will show you that as we go along. This is the smart scoot. The handy scoot looks very similar but the only difference is they put the controller at the front whereas this has the controller and battery all at the back and the way you release the battery pack is from this this little handle here but just going quickly over the scooter it's made of stainless steel of aluminum as well like the aluminum handles the uh, handlebar but the frame main frame the, the chrome is actually stainless steel with a nice strong sturdy frame seat post is also stainless steel the backrest there looks uncomfortable but, but it is not it's a really comfortable seat on this I love the mesh back makes it breathable some of these uh, plastic vinyl seats on the go-go's if it's warm like it is here in Vegas you're back against these seats it tends to make you sweat it a little bit and whereas this it's really comfortable conforms to your back as I'll sit on it now it uh, really hugs the bottom of your back it's really comfortable makes you sit upright and also the uh, the back is adjustable so also along with the contour seat so if you're a bigger kind of person like me you can move the seat back back and it's really comfortable yeah it supports my back really well so going from top to bottom on this scooter as you can see the scooter does freewheel on its own so that it does not have a automatic brake it's driven by the front wheel as you can see there it has a a brake disc and the motor is actually inside of this front wheel so it's front wheel driven there are your two foot pegs it's where you put your feet when you're traveling these two cup like things here there and there that is for a walker a stick sorry so you could put your stick in there and then you can with the velcro strap that you get with it you can velcro it onto your handlebars to keep it secure this strap also secures the handlebar to the frame and I'll show you that when we go to fold the scooter up another feature with this scooter if you come to the front Jenny is these two little holes here one there and one there and they supply you with a luggage rack and they go into these little receptacle holes one there and one there and it's like a metal metal u shape that comes out of there and you can put a piece of luggage on there and again with the velcro strap strap the handle to the scooter you will have a lot of weight on the front of the scooter so it may affect the steering a little bit the bottom stays still but the top will actually articulate so just be careful if you do have the luggage rack on there you get a basket with this scooter and with the uh, handy scoot which goes onto the handlebars it's a metal folding basket the customer didn't bring it with her but uh, we can put a picture up on the on the screen to show you what that looks like but that comes with the scooter so you get the luggage rack you get the basket and everything else that you see here your lithium battery at the back which does come away so if you did want to transport this scooter on an airline it is airline friendly it's a lithium ion battery 636 volt and it's 8 amp hour so it's below the threshold of the airlines maximum 10 amp hour so these are actually 8 amp hour 
So, and the way you remove this um, battery pack, there's a plug on this side that goes to the scooter, and that's your main power plug. There's your charge port, it just opens and closes like that. There's also a switch on there that turns the scooter on and off, and this is your battery release. So it's just, just a little hook clip that goes over like that and then holds the battery in while you're driving. But to remove the battery, just release that and then just lift the battery off. There's like a little slot there that slots into these two guides there to locate the battery back on the scooter. Just slots back in, put the hook back over, secure the battery and then plug it back in and then switch back on and you should have power to the scooter. Along the frame is your main wiring harness that comes from the controller all the way up the frame to the handlebars and that operates your control systems just here. So you've just got on off mode which is your three speed settings. I believe it's three, five and seven on this scooter and it's three, five and nine on the smart scoot. No, the handy scoot, sorry. This is your battery indicator lights. So when you turn it on, it'll scroll up and then show you how much battery life you've got. As you can see, this is full power. Also shows you your speed setting that you're currently on. Low, medium, high, so three, five and seven on this scooter or three five nine on the handy scooter on to the uh, right hand of the controls are your drive and reverse switches and your little horn also you operate the speed via the twist grip handle and this is your front operated disc brake which you can see down there it's, that operates that disc brake so this little black lever there operates the e-brake so you can actually put the, the the scooter into park mode it puts the brake on and it stops the throttle from operating because of a micro switch in there and then just to release the e-brake press the black handle flex back and that releases the e-brake now you can push the scooter on the scooter itself as you sit down you have two foot pegs so it's pretty comfortable so my feet are, are big boats but it's pretty good you just got to be careful as you're traveling around that your feet are sticking out the front you're exposed a little bit but it's pretty comfortable okay so as you sat on the scooter everything's there in front of you I recommend you start in the low mode and slowly twist the grip until you feel the motor kick in. Don't twist grip straight to full throttle. The wheel will spin at the front and you don't want to do that. You lose traction and you can burn holes in your carpet. So best thing, just start it in slow, low mode. Slowly twist the grip until you feel the scooter go. Is a feathered throttle. Okay, so here we go. We start off in slow. It's you feel the uh, the wheel spinning there, and that's at slow speed. So just be careful. Just feather the throttle until you get comfortable with the speed. <coughs> if you do press the brake handle, that does cut the throttle off. But be careful to make sure you make the throttle go back to zero. Don't keep it throttled on. If you take the hand off the brake, it'll kick off again and, and start off. But start nice and slow. And then twist the throttle a bit more to keep your speed up. I wouldn't want to go any faster than this indoors. Unless you have more room than we do here. But it's comfortable great outdoor scooter if you've got plenty of room plenty of straight 
and then you could increase your throttle even more once you get going. It's more of an outdoor scooter, more of a recreational scooter than a mobility scooter in my mind because it's more like a, an exposed bike and with the uh, brake handle you haven't got an automatic brake. So I'm going up to the three mile an hour speed. That's full throttle. Very stable at this speed. I'm turning at three miles an hour with a three wheel. You will have a tip sensation, but it's not too bad with this, especially with those articulating wheels at the back. I'll show you those. I'm going to dare to put it up to medium speed now. Start off slow. It's a lot more snappy now. That's five miles an hour. I've definitely got to take off the throttle on that. The wheel does spin more. What I'll do tomorrow when the car park's empty, I'll get it up to seven miles an hour and see how it goes outside. I won't do it today because it's there's more people in the car park, so parking I don't want to don't want to get run over. What you say? Parking lot. Parking lot. No <laughs> car park, mate. It's a car park. It's a <laughs> cut that out. Yeah, that's it. Five miles an hour. I wouldn't dare go that fast indoors. It's pretty, pretty quick. Unlike the feather scooter, I was doing five miles an hour here, and it was very stable. I could quite happy do that. It's just this this wheel Running. spins at the front. It's the black marks there. Where it's the wheel spins. Could be used as indoor, but definitely use at the slow mode of three miles an hour. You don't want to get yourself in trouble, especially with the handbrake only. There's no foot brake, there's no automatic brake. But it's stable enough. It's key thing is it's lightweight, but it's not as light as the Feather. So far, that is definitely my favorite scooter of them, of them all at the moment. So going back to the scooter itself, Jenny's redundant on the camera now, but well, I'm, I'm here. There you go. So Jenny's going to take I'm only over. Here. I'm going to show you how to take the seat off and all the other things. So let's move the scooter over here. So, like I said, we can adjust the seat to bring that seat back in. It also does fold, so it makes it nice and compact there. To get it into your vehicle at the bottom here is a quick release handle and basically that just quickly releases there and this this here is your seat post pin so you can adjust that to different height settings if you're a long legged person like me which i pretty much like it at that height but you don't need to remove that once it's set you're happy with the height you just remove the seat just like that See, it doesn't weigh a lot, to be honest. I think it's about, what, eight pounds, Jenny? Eight and a half pounds. Eight and a half pounds for this seat. And I think it's probably the same on the smarts, on the handy scoot. I yep, keep getting pretty, them wrong. Pretty way. much the handy scoot is, uh, the seat weight is nine pounds. So they're thereabouts, they're practically the same, same scooter. The only difference is that we've noticed, like I said, is the controller up the front, the battery at the back, whereas these are both at the back. I think they've tried to sort of like suspend the weight a bit more forward. Biggest differences we've seen between the handy scoot and this the being the smart scoot is the frame actually dips down a little bit lower so you can step into it. This one's a little bit higher because of the wheel, but they've actually put a, I'll put a picture up on the screen where it actually bends down, makes it easier to step into the scooter. And of course they put the battery at the back and the controller at the front. Uh, but otherwise, the frame, like I said, that dip, everything else is the same. So that's how you would remove the seat. And then you can actually adjust the width of these wheels. This lady actually has them set in the medium position. It's got three settings. One in there, that's, you see these marks here showing you where your settings are. There's like a little black T there. And up to that line is where you can... Uh, set the wheel distance is basically you would pull the pin release the quick release there and the wheels just slides into three different position that being its widest medium and then closest tend to want to do that if you load it into a car or a tight space then you can bring the wheels in or even just take them off completely 
but most people leave them attached. I'll put that back in there for her. There's like a, a little plunger at this end that pulls that bearing in. So you press that and it goes all the way through and then it releases that stops that from coming out. And then you just put your quick release lock on there and that locks that wheel into place. So there's no motors at the back of these driven at the front like we said earlier. So the next thing you would do if you want to uh, transport this is obviously take your battery pack off which I'm going to do, unplug that, switch that off, lift that clip, so that makes it a lot lighter. I'm not sure what's the weight of the batteries on these. Four pounds on the smart scoot. Yeah. And five, I think it is. Five. <coughs> yeah, it's four pounds on the handy scoot. Oh, four. So they're, they're, they're about the same size battery, same kind of weight. but. Why not make it a little bit lighter for loading if uh, if you can't lift heavy items? So that's what this scooter was really designed for. So to release the um, oh the tiller also has a quick release on it. So if you want to adjust the height of the tiller, you can do just by doing that. That's the quick release. This lady's got it set at its lowest. Doesn't go up that far, but about two two and a half inches difference there. But this lady's got it set right down low. Seems to be comfortable. I find it comfortable. So to fold the tiller at the front is another quick release. So everything's quick release on this scooter. So basically that locks your tiller in place. It won't fall down until you pull that forward. And even if that's forward, it still doesn't fall. You have to push across. So it has like a little pin on this side that locks into this hole here and then you would drop that down and that's where this velcro comes in this little strap here which I'll undo and just put your handlebar to one side loop it over let's get it right loop it over and then that will then secure your handlebar to the scooter so he doesn't swing around on you. Your foot pegs lift up. Just fold that up, make sure you don't lose any of that. And but that's pretty much how you would load the scooter. So let me just stand up. Find the best way to lift these is from the handlebar or the frame from the back of the scooter, front of the scooter and lift. Okay, so the base weight of this without the battery and the seat is going to be around about 29 pounds, 30 pounds, around that mark. Handy scoot or the smart scoot, they seem to be about the same weight. So, but let me say, nice and lightweight, it's really light, 29 pounds. But there is some assembly to do. And then to reassemble, just reverse everything you did. Wrap that back up. Put your tiller back up until it clicks in. Here it click. And then put your quick release back on and lock it into place. And that, that's your tiller done. And just put this uh, strap back on. It doesn't get in anybody's way. Like I say, you can use this strap then to put your cane in the cane holder and strap it to the handlebar and your battery pack I've shown you that that just slides in just pops in there hooks on there just make sure you do hook it on you don't want the battery pack leaving the scooter and then plug it in switch it on and then you can operate back as normal there it lights up little horn as we showed you to charge this scooter I showed you earlier there's your little charge port just there. It'll probably take about five hours if it was pretty empty, but you can top these up quickly. So it can take an hour or less, depending on what the charge status is. And then you put your seat back on, release your handle again. Just make sure you get the seat at the right orientation and slowly drop down. There's your seat pin, it's locked into place and then that just makes sure it's nice and sturdy. Put your seat back up 
and he off again to ride. So, pretty much in summary, it's not a bad scooter. I think it's a, a scooter for a certain person. We have sold plenty of these to plenty of people, and the people that have bought them like them, and uh, they go traveling with them. I like the heart-shaped seat. Yeah, it's good for my butt. That. Yeah, it's a comfortable seat. This <laughs> is, is one of its greatest greatest features is, is the comfortable seat, adjustable. It's similar on the uh, handy scoot, but it has more of a, uh, a vinyl back square instead of the mesh seat. So I prefer the mesh, more comfortable, supports your back and also lets it breathe. So the tires, they're basically flat free. You won't get punctures on these. They're just solid rubber. And like I said, the front tire is solid rubber as well, which has the motor inside of it. And that's your braking mechanism for your, for your disc brake. Okay, the range on both the handy scoot and the smart scoot is about the same. It's about 12 miles. It's, uh, they're both about the same. They have the same battery, the same, uh, one goes just a little bit faster than the other. But, uh, but all in all, good scooter. Glad we got it in to give her a review. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. And that's the uh, handy scoot and the smart scoot.